Thanks for joining um, our first AMA, I think, right? Did you guys have an AMA in the past? It's the first one. First, our first AMA. It's first the first AMA. one. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. My name's Alad, AKA Laz from the community. I'm Upland's head of community, and we're here today with two out of three of Upland's co founders. We have Idan Zuckerman, Dirk yes. Lutz, and uh, Mani Honigstein, who uh, couldn't make it uh, on live video today. Um, we hope you're all doing well, and we're excited to uh, answer some questions. Uh, we got a nice long list of uh, things that you guys want us to talk about. Uh, and if we have time towards the end, then we'll take questions live. Uh, feel free to play around with the Zoom interface if you're using it for the first time. Uh, there's a way to raise your hand, uh, like John Hodler is doing right now, um, so that we know that you want to ask a question or something like that. And I think it's also possible, if I'm not mistaken, to submit questions uh, anonymously, if that's something that interests you. Um, so, uh, co-founders, how are you guys doing today? We're doing great. Um, so, hi, I'm Dirk. I'm here right now in uh, beautiful Silicon Valley. And um, we have right next to me, at least on my right right now, my screen is Idan. Hey guys, uh, also in Silicon Valley and uh, Happy to be each one in his own home in these uh, crazy times. Uh, we all know it's, uh, the, the world is changing, but we're trying to, you know, just plow through it. So, hello everybody, glad to be here. We're adapting, we're adapting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and we have a third co-founder um, who's um, actually not with us here in the call right now. It's, um, his name is um, Manny um, Honigstein. And he is also living here with us in uh, Silicon uh, Valley. So we're going to give a little bit of update about um, the, you know, where we stand in today in this AMA, but also we had all these questions. Elad so kindly to moderate for it, right? And I, um, maybe Elad you can you know, start asking your first questions, so and we're just going to run through them, right? <clears throat> Um, well, I thought maybe, you know, it looks like from our list of attendees that we have some uh, veteran players here, but uh, do you guys just want to talk about for two seconds, the game in general to um, present the game uh, kind of in a nutshell? Yeah, absolutely. So um, maybe just a quick, uh, quick intro also how uh, we, we came together as, as co-founders. Uh, so uh, maybe to also to get that, that idea. So the quick background, you know, Manny and Idan, you know, the gaming, they have a big gaming background. My background has been for many years also in the blockchain technology. All three of us have extensive experience in uh, starting new companies, running startups. So uh, for myself, it's my fifth one. Man and uh, Dan have been previously working on a gaming company as well. And um, so, so we basically came up with the idea of uh, Upland uh, when you know the three of us met uh, was roughly uh, two years ago. Of course, there was a uh, lots of hype around the whole blockchain space and and things. And we were actually having one of those game nights. We, we meet here and there together. We actually were playing this famous game Monopoly and uh, watching everything was happening around uh, you know around um, you know in the world of blockchain. And uh, we you know we said you one and one. We put things together and at the same time also I think it was actually the same night when I recall correctly we were watching the Netflix series uh, Stranger Things I don't know if our yeah. listeners here know it uh, it's actually a kind of interesting person. yeah it's a kind of interesting series and actually as you know there's a parallel world it's a little bit negative world because there's a monster in the other world obviously but we said you know this is how we brought one and one together right hey Monopoly you know, Netflix series blockchain, NFTs, and so on. And yeah, so that's how we, you know, we brainstormed a little bit, said that, hey, why don't we create a company out of that? And that's, uh, you know, that's the result which you see today, which is Upland. But the hand over to Ida, maybe to explain a little yeah. bit you know, what's actually, you know, this is about. Yeah, and, and also, you know, the, the premise behind it at the end of the day, like, like Dirk said, uh, Money and myself, we come from the gaming uh, industry. And, uh, you know, w once we kind of like understood uh, what blockchain can offer to this industry, we were like, okay, this, this can be potentially a, a game changer. Uh, and how do you turn games like into these open economy uh, uh, places where people can not just now play, but they actually enjoy true ownership and are open to trade uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer economy uh, between themselves. And we think that this is... Uh, Kind of like even a gospel that uh, you know a lot of people in the crypto space specifically really get it, 
but the broader gaming crowd doesn't necessarily yet understand the full benefits and what kind of like a superior value proposition proposition these kinds of games can give them as players so this was kind of like one of the catalysts for us uh, uh, putting upland together and then the other day of the day upland is a, a virtual property trading game you know where you can kind of like uh, buy sell trade and develop your own virtual properties but that are tied to real world addresses so it, it has this kind of like a uh, very familiar monopoly edge that should, that should kind of like resonate with everyday players because it, you know people just get it people understand immediately why one property should be worth more than another as it relates to to the real world um so we are on this mission to kind of like build this uh, super fun uh you know game with a casual edge but that is a, that has really uh, complex and interesting and captivating economy behind it uh, and this is what we feel is going to kind of like drive the game and keep the the people you know interested in playing. Yeah. You have so, anything to add to that? Yeah. Well, basically, that's. I mean, we're going to run through it. You know, what exactly we're doing, what kind of features are in the game, what features will be coming, what's the vision that's coming a little bit later. Maybe one or two more words about us and the company. So, as I mentioned, we want to be completely transparent. So, Idan, Nani, and I, we're based here in uh, Silicon Valley so, since many years. I can hear by my accent, I'm originally from Germany. So, if it's hard to ever, uh, say hi to Thorsten. Uh, hello, Thorsten. <laughs> out there uh you know who's um uh, running or you know you know he's created actually his own telegram channel there so the three of us here based in silicon valley we have also our creative director who is here together with us um, um jason in uh, with a small office then we have elat who's based in israel and um and then a big big shout out to our team in ukraine we have currently 17 one seven people in a, in, a, in a town called uh, Nikolaev in the south of Ukraine. They are really dedicated, they're, they're a super team, and uh, you know, they're, they're doing really, really a fantastic job. You know, big shout out here. Yeah, and just maybe to add to that, so we, again, with these crazy times, you know that everybody is currently working from home. And, you know, we, we are, we, this is not an excuse for us. So we are plowing through, we're going with our roadmap, and uh, um, everything is pro progressing. Even though with all these like uh, real world challenges we have today, this is not going to affect Upland. So you can't catch Corona in Upland, but also we're not going to let us slow it, uh, slow us down in the real world. I think that probably the way that the company was uh, kind of a little bit decentralized in the first place that we have people all over uh, probably helped us uh, cope and adapt to the situation, wouldn't you say? Definitely, yeah. I mean, today everybody works uh, worldwide. Uh, you know, companies are being more and more dispersed. So this actually does. Uh, I mean, then we have all the technology to support it as well. So uh, we are used to it. It's not ideal, but we're again, we're just plowing through it. Yeah. Good stuff. So let's all get right. some uh, questions going. We'll just uh, dive right in. Thanks uh, again, everybody, for submitting uh, many of your questions ahead of time. Um, I think we could start out by maybe talking a little bit about uh, or answering some of the questions that have to do with the timeline uh, of the game, of you know the development and everything that's going on, um, and uh, what you guys see there. So here's our first question from Ender's World, and uh, he or she asked, um, "What are the goals for Upland over the next 12 months, and what are the goals for the next 24 months?" Yeah, so uh, again, if we speak about the, the next 12 months, I think it's, uh, I, again, we've been very public uh, about our plans for 2020, uh, and it all appears in the in the roadmap. And um, I think um, if we can just go over, you know, quickly what we've achieved so far. So currently we're, you know, three months into the year. Uh, and I think uh, just going quickly, we've, uh, again, we've uh, enabled setting a visit price uh, for, for uh, people, for property owners. Uh, crypto in is out there. Referral bonuses are out. Um, you know, we've had treasure hunts launched recently uh, with the collecting sense features. Uh, we've had our first live event uh, at Saint Patrick's Day, which was pretty cool, and we're going to have our next one pretty soon uh, around uh, around Easter. Uh, and then uh, toggle real world data, two factor authentication, desktop just rolled out. So we we are kind of like uh, executing on that on that roadmap, and you can expect uh, for the rest of 2020 that we keep uh, executing on that. Um, one thing is that I'm probably, you know, that, that's a question we get a lot. When, the, when is fiat out coming, right? So that's a, a very common question and it's in our uh, 2020 roadmap in green. And I can, I can, I can say, uh, so this is something that we've been working on 
from day one when we when we founded Upland. This was one of our first tests that we set working on. And like we've communicated in the past, uh, this is not a technical issue per se. This is more a regulatory issue that would allow us uh, to, to allow people to sell uh, their digital assets for real money, but also be compliant uh, in, with US regulation and other highly regulated markets. Uh, so I can happily announce that two weeks ago we signed uh, a partnership. I can't say with, uh, with whom yet, uh, but it's, uh, I'm sure that everybody knows them, although they're probably not expecting them to be, to be the, the, that partner. But we have signed a partnership that would allow us to, uh, to proceed and roll out with uh, the ability to sell uh, digital assets for fiat. And we're going to have an announcement about that in the coming uh, probably month or two. Uh, so stay tuned, but it's happening and we're working on it and we're very confident still that it's coming in 2020 as well. Uh, and then again, for the rest of the year, we're going to keep executing on that roadmap. Yeah. And that ties really ties into the vision of it because it's very important, this uh, fiat out aspect for the for the long term vision, which we have. And I want to maybe quickly elaborate what we what we have in, in mind and uh, what, what will be coming. So the idea is when we say we want to create an open economy and when we initially said, you know, when we had the original thing, when we saw that with, uh, with uh, you know, the parallel world of, of, of stranger things, you know, we say, you know, that's, you know, the world is becoming more and more digital these days. And what does this actually mean? And when you see, you know, there's a lot of, let's say, fantasy worlds out there, you know, blockchain, non-blockchain worlds out there, but there has never been really a world where everything is tied to real world addresses to what you actually you know see every day i mean my, maybe less these days because we are locked into our rooms or houses but normally you're out there and doing things and that's also one of the main differentiators we have here with upland that we are so closely connected to the real world but that means connect being connected to the real world is also there's a completely new opportunities which will arise some opportunities which will come out of the game directly but but what we foresee is also opportunities which actually our, let's say, the uplanders or the citizens of upland will, will generate themselves. To give you one, some com concrete examples, what comes out of the game itself is, um, as you all know, we launched in San Francisco, so we're based in, uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, a little bit south, uh, in a small town called Mountain View, maybe you've heard of it, and it's also headquarters of Google. Um, so, but, um, of course, we know San Francisco. You know, it's very simple. I mean, we've been there in the streets. We've you know, seen the neighborhoods. And uh, to be honest, we also discover new things since we started the game, uh, which we weren't aware of. Um, but you know, once we branch out to other cities, and you know, we will do that for sure, is um, that we, you know, when it comes to New York, maybe or Chicago or you know other or Los Angeles, these are cities you know well known. London, of course, you know Paris, Berlin. And, but as soon as we go to other cities like Minnesota, somewhere in Minnesota, or uh, you know Philadelphia, um, you know we go to Manchester in the UK, or to um, you know small cities, uh, you know elsewhere in in, in Asia, uh, we know that we don't know these areas. And the big and the large vision with Upland is that since we're connected to the real world, we want to happen when things that will also happen in the real world. So we need actually local ambassadors, what we say. And we, that's the reason uh, when you go to our, today on our website, you find it on the about page, there's what we call a franchise system. So we want to allow other people to join us and to become some kind of, we haven't developed the program fully. And you know, we're, we're in the process of doing that. But we want to allow them to become some kind of a, a franchisee. That means they can take parts of the game and you know then promote it and do things in their spe specific region. And that's that's what's coming. And that eventually will also generate potential revenue income opportunities for 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 a user. So that's that's what's coming directly out of the game in a certain sense. But. Also, what we see in the mid to long term is that people will start to create their own businesses. And again, um, we are blurring the real and the virtual world here in a certain sense. Um, so what kind of businesses? We cannot tell you today. But what is very, of course, you know, clear, let's say when you're an artist, maybe one day you create a virtual gallery or a gallery on a, on a property in Upland, and then you will be able to sell those properties you know, in a virtual gallery, uh, excuse me, your, your, virtual, um, your virtual art on a property. Um, so that's you, because you created that virtual gallery, right? So that, that's something you, ca you can do. Or maybe you become a virtual uh, car dealer, right? You will be maybe you sell 
on your property, you sell virtual cars, maybe you enhance them, you pick them up a little bit, and then you sell them to other players. So that's how we see how people interact directly in the game. But it can also go outside into the real world where people maybe buy pieces of a of a of a of a maybe of a real car you know like what we say in the blockchain world that you know maybe a car is tokenized and you take that piece of car you know you buy a piece in upland and maybe you bring that car then and also back into into upland again so this is this, these are all these kind of um ideas you know which we have in mind but i think which will probably flourish once once the co community develops further and of course once the game is developed further it also will include the, the wanting you know add other technologies to it i mean there's a little bit further out but augmented reality virtual reality we clearly see that coming and um we want to enable a lot of things and what we also see is that and maybe you don't want to chime in here is you know that we want to open it up not just for players or stakeholders but also for developers yeah yeah so again it's, it's always been a vision of ours to uh to allow other developers uh to develop experiences that would tie into upland uh and ov obviously for that you need liquidity so we're in the phases where we're kind of like trying to grow the community trying to grow the game to make it uh, uh you know an appealing prospect for developers to uh to develop uh, things for the game um and um i, I think that um um yeah that's pretty much it about third party development it's probably, probably uh, more further down the road uh, so it's it's kind of like uh, not probably going to happen in the next uh, year probably maybe the year after that or or, or beyond all right so speaking of uh, stuff that's you know coming up hopefully sooner rather than later uh, here is a question from thank me later um, he asks how long until new york is released uh, <laughs> even a slightly vague answer will do. Who's going to take that one? Yeah, so, I mean, people have heard, right? We always say, oh, we don't know. We are not going to announce exactly what city is going to be released next. But I think we can say that today, right? New York is going to be the next city. Um, this is going to happen. Um, and here it depends a little bit. What is important for us, and as you can see, we're currently adding new features to the game. We will be very careful when we are going to uh, uh, launch New York because we want to make sure you know that the game is more complete. You know everything is working smoothly. As you all know, we also in um, open beta right now. We have here there some glitches. You know we have to correct, uh, and you know we want to really see that we are ripe for 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 entering New York. Also, what is very important is to know that um, that. You know, when, once we open up New York, it doesn't mean that all, you know, the whole community immediately moves there. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, San Francisco is going to be empty. The way we are going to build the game is, you know, that uh, there's a lot of things and more things still happening in San Francisco where there will be a fine balance about things and it will only slowly start more actions in New York, for instance, right? So that's going to be very careful you know where people have really a reason also to be in san francisco maybe even to go back uh, to to san francisco so and since san francisco was our starting ground i mean we will also try out new things there that's also another aspect why san francisco is so in, in interesting however i mean since we are so location based it could also well be that we start out you know when there's a special event or something of course which cannot happen in san francisco maybe we start that somewhere else that that's of course also well, down the line uh, how we see things will will evolve yeah and, and again maybe just to to to, to reiterate uh again if uh, people ask uh is new york coming uh so according to our projections again uh the uh kind of like the liquidity in the economy will allow it to happen uh, kind of like in the second half of 2020 so if our projections come true we will open new york at that time and again like dirk said when we open up new york it's going to be slowly uh, done. So all of the activity is still going to happen in San Francisco. So everything around treasure hunts and then new features that will have been released by then will still happen in San Francisco while New York will open up just, uh, uh, example, without collections and with just the initial properties uh, that are put for sale. But still all of the activity will be focused on San Francisco and we will cautiously and step by step cast that activity into New York as well as liquidity and uh, market activity allows. 
One thing maybe also to add people, I think I read it once in the community chat, where will people spawn going forward, right? Because of course right now everyone spawns and starts out in San Francisco. But as you can see, once you can take your mobile phone, right? And we have location-based features also integrated into the game. So we imagine that people will also spawn elsewhere, but there will be also some, let's say gamified mechanic, how people will spawn. So stay tuned for that. So, uh, you know, it will not always be San Francisco going, be going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think maybe tying back a bit for the maybe to the initial questions of you know what do we see Upland as three years from now, right? So we see three years from now, right? We have millions of players, and then the world is basically open, and you spawn in your physical location. So you spawn, you start out where you are, and we're going to introduce probably I, I don't know if it's going to make it to 2020, but if not 2020, then 2021 for sure. We're going to give the people the the ability and the power to kind of like spawn uh, new places in Upland and make them available uh, uh, with special gamified mechanics. And I think it appears in 2020 roadmap as kind of marked in, uh, in red. So it may uh, make it only in 2021, but that's gonna be a really cool mechanic that allows, that gives the uplanders the power to open up the world. Uh, uh, but, but it also makes sure by, by the mechanic that there's enough liquidity in that area to justify spawning. Uh, so that's gonna be a cool feature coming. Nice, very nice. How about we transition into uh, features of the game um, a little bit? We had some really good uh, questions about that. Um, so for example, uh, Capitalist asks, um, is it possible that Upland will one day have sponsorships with big brands? I think you that's guys touched upon it already, but do you want to elaborate yeah. a little bit? Yeah, that's a very good question from Capitalist here. So, I mean, that's part of the vision. We want to be, we want to bring brands into the game. That's definitely, you know, and we already reached out and we already have started talking to brands. So big, big car manufacturer we've started talking to. And I, I mentioned that uh, example before, right, where, um, you know, we bring in those cars, um, you know, we have a couple of ideas how exactly that's going to look like. But in terms of uh, you know, but people can uh, mod those cars, pimp those cars. I mentioned that, you know, maybe have a share in a real, in an old timer, you know, and, you know, bring that, that, that you know, that real car into the get back into the game. So that's coming, we, uh, you know, we've been, you know, coffee shops, uh, you know, what have you, you know, restaurants, you know, this is, of course, since we're so location based, could be super interesting. We also started talking to, to airlines and this has to do, and we're going to come to that uh, in, a, in a second is uh, because, uh, you know, we've mentioned New York, you know, because the question is, as we all know, we have sold the airport, some of the airport parcels, and, you know, we want also airlines to get involved. However, this is a little tricky, these discussions these days because of the current um, uh, virus situation. So uh, we might have to come up with another idea, or, uh, but, but uh, well, let's see, we have, uh, it's, it's also just not, air, you know, there's also other methods of transportation in this world besides airplanes. But maybe that's already the next question, right? Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of airplanes, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, what will become of the airport properties? Yeah, um, so again, as we communicated, uh, uh, the game mechanic behind the whole idea of transportation, and, and it relates to uh, you know, airplanes, cars, and, and in the future trains as well, is that, uh, as everybody knows in Upland, uh, you can travel between properties. And uh, you can also do the same between two properties that you own across, you know, a continent or across the world. The only thing is that it would be really, really slow. So you can take your Explorer and move it to your own property. It will, it will take you time. And you can take uh, shortcuts to that by using means of transportation. So uh, either taking, catching a flight or catching a train or using your own car that you own in Upland. Uh, and obviously, you know, airplanes will be quicker than trains, trains will be slightly quicker than cars, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so for people to utilize, uh, to take a flight, they will basically need to do what they do in the real world. They will need to get to the airport terminal and then uh, pay for a flight uh, to get to, to New York. So the way it's going to initially work is that the first step you need to do is you need to get to the airport. In order to get to the airport, you would need to go through the terminals to one of the, uh, so if I'm going to New York, for example, I would need to go through the domestic terminals. And then uh, my, uh, my send fee, first of all, we have different owners in those terminals. Those owners can set their asking price like any other property. 
And we're going to have some mechanic around limiting uh, the amount uh, of, of cents that each uh, property owner has. So kind of like the cents are still being spread among all property in equal proportion to their ownership in the terminal. But then once th that happens, basically the owners of the terminal parcels are going to enjoy those cent fees coming in from people who want to travel via airplane between, between cities. So that's the first part. Once players get there, they will have the option to uh, to pay for a flight uh, to take, let's say, to New York. Uh, initially, that uh, uh, that flight fee is not going to this is not going to relate to the terminals, right? Terminals get their income through the send fees from uh, from uh, applanders utilizing those terminals. Uh, but then people initially will pay for flights. That fee will go to the community fee to the community pool, sorry, to support the economy. And then later on, our vision is that people actually operate airlines uh, in, in Upland. So slowly, those features that tie to the community pool will be replaced by actual people operating actual businesses in Upland. And so I, I hope that kind of like answers the questions in general. So just to recap, so the uh, current airport uh, parcel owners, they'll be enjoying uh, the fees from people that are sending their Block Explorer to the airport. And then in the future, there will be features of, you know, flying out and somewhere down the line, you know, owning airlines and such for other Correct. players as well. Correct. So, so initially, again, when, so when we launch, for example, New York, people will need to travel, uh, people, or people will, can choose to travel via air, airfare. At that point, they will send their, their uh, explorers to the terminal, utilizing the normal send fees between properties. And then they will need to pay for the flight. Initially, that, that will go to the community pool. Later on, Hopefully, this will be operated by players running airline. Nice. It's really nice to see that, uh, you know, because an economy is based on, you know, its participants. So there's this whole uh, community vibe that's happening inside the game itself and, you know, outside of it with uh, communication and so on. And, um, you know, from the roadmap, it shows, you know, that we'll have squads eventually, which will also, you know, uh, uh, develop that kind of uh, aspect of, you know, what we're doing. So. Uh, Choina asks, when can we expect to see the squads introduced and how exactly are they going to work? Yeah, so, so squads is one of the features that we have uh, in our 2020 roadmap with uh, high confidence for 2020. And it is already kind of like uh, in design phases and close to implementation. Um, and uh, the way squads will work is it will allow up to uh, four uplanders to team up together. And uh, uh, the the, uh, the immediate uh, features around that is going to be that a uh, uh, so let me take a step back and maybe maybe announce this now. So first of all, our, our next release and I've seen some people uh, mention it as Margarita, but it's actually Martini, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have uh, probably a, a decent post around it. The same we had around Mojito, where we're gonna explain exactly which are the features that are coming. Uh, but uh, one of the features I can speak to that are coming are leaderboards and challenges, uh, and and we'll we'll have more we'll elaborate more about this when we come out with uh, exactly uh, describing Martini. Uh, but uh, going back for a second to squads, so squads will also be able to participate. We're going to have special leaderboards and challenges sections for squads, so people can participate as teams and compete against other teams. So that's going to be one aspect. Another cool aspect is that teaming up will open up uh, the, uh, the prospect of joint ownership. So through squads, people are also going to be able to pull their resources together and acquire uh, either a property or a landmark later on in the game uh, or, do, or, you know, or, or a, have this type of like joint ownership of digital assets in the form of squads. Maybe later on, it's going to be operating a joint business or creating a joint factory, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this is going to be the main aspect of squads. I know that we have communicated in the past that uh, squads members are going to be able to utilize each other's properties. We are currently reviewing this again because, again, there's a lot of things that we learned uh, based on uh, uh, the Treasure Hunts release that we had. So we are reviewing again the prospect of being able to utilize each other's, each other's properties just to make sure uh, this doesn't kind of like break or causes the game to be in, in balance in the favor of squad members. Mm -hmm. um, and continuing the topic of uh, the ownership, right, which is also related to the squads, but it's also a basic uh, foundation of the uh, Upland game itself. So um, another question we had was, what exactly is the future 
plan for true ownership? How will it continue to develop? And how will players be able to use their, um, their private keys? Yeah, um, so uh, let me take there a step back and maybe start with, uh, with the issue of private keys. So first of all, today, uh, again, people do enjoy uh, true ownership in Upland. Uh, within the confounds of regular requirements in the U.S. and other highly regulated markets. Uh, so that means that, for example, people can just pass Apex between themselves and other accounts outside of Upland. Everything has to happen inside the game economy. Uh, other than that, though, again, today, uh, with the technology we developed with, uh, with our smart client, uh, we as operators do not have access to our players' private keys. Okay? And, uh, and that's just the way the technology works, okay? The, the, those keys are ciphered on the client side and uh, we store a ciphered version of them where we don't have access to the information that deciphers those private keys. G granted though, we understand that uh, people may not uh, trust the technology to work or for whatever reason, uh, they want to own their private keys uh, themselves. And we're gonna give the option to players to generate their own private keys for their Upland EOS accounts uh, through means like uh, Scatter, for example, Scatter Wallet, and then associate those private keys with their Upland EOS accounts. Uh, at that point though, I have to mention, if people choose to do so, uh, the user experience will be a bit more cumbersome in the means that every time you're gonna do a transaction, you'd have to sign it with your, uh, with your uh, uh, Scatter Wallet. Uh, just because that's the, that's the way it works. So it is going to create a degraded user experience, but it will give the option for people who just, you know, for whatever reason, want to have their private keys in the wallet uh, to operate in that way. Um, so I, I hope that kind of like answers the question. Good stuff. Dirk, did you have anything to add to the true ownership topic? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> true ownership, I mean, of course it will go beyond uh, uh, just a pure property owning because we plan on bringing other assets in, into the game or in forms of NFTs, right? So, uh, you know, that's of course then clear, right? That you would only just not truly own just your property or your parcel, but also, uh, you know, going forward, you will own other assets going, which, which you then can uh, buy, sell, trade in within Upland also. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the cool aspect of it is that uh, when we bring NFTs, Upland doesn't just give the option the, or the, you know, the prospect of owning and trading NFTs. Keep in mind, we, we are going to bring in hopefully millions of players, right, that normally would have not set up any blockchain identities because, you know, for them, it's really simple in Upland and it's obfuscated behind our, our unique technology. But now anybody who holds an NFT and can bring it into Upland has a potential market that is much bigger than you know the usual or the normal uh, and limited uh, crypto crowd uh, to be able to sell those NFTs to within within Upland. So this is a very pros this is a very interesting prospect of Upland, which people don't necessarily uh, uh, you know fully understand uh, without kind of like uh, uh, pointing that out. But it it could be a game changer. Yeah, I, I want that... to be quite quite frank. Yeah, I want to be saying I want to be quite frank here, right? Because you know we have all this. You know we've been working all so long in the, the whole uh, blockchain space, decentralization versus centralization, and all these uh, kind of uh, kind of discussions. But one one important part of the mission of uh, Upland is that we really want to bring blockchain to the masses without them really knowing it. Uh, as maybe say, say either saying it. But when we, uh, when we are able to achieve that, then it becomes so much more interesting because we have so many more players in there. Because today you say, you know, there's roughly, there's a market of 200,000 potential wallets out there these days who could be, you know, playing such a game if you just hardcore, um, you know, like a hardcore Ether, Ethereum game or something. Uh, so that's, that's actually limited. And that's what we say, no, we don't want to go that. We really want to be a mass market, mass audiences, you know, that's who we're targeting. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it does take some uh, getting used to. And I think that um, the new players that join us, especially the non-crypto ones, are learning to appreciate that even though it's digital, it's very much a real economy that's being uh, developed here. Um, and the true ownership, of course, plays um, a very important part in that. Um, here's yeah, I, one, more thing, one, sure. I, one more thing I want to add here is also, 
Uh, right now, we are focusing a little bit more on, on crypto people because they understand, they appreciate what, what, what we are doing. But, you know, we're doing that in, in our open beta phase. You know, when you see the marketing we are doing, you might see, you know, that we are appearing on here and there on some crypto specific websites like, like Dave Radar and Debcom and others. Um, so, so we're running these campaigns, but going forward, once we move out of open beta, we will go mu much more mass market and you will see us also on, on, on other media channels. <clears throat> nice. I'm sure we'll look forward to having uh, many new players in the community. Um, we have two questions here that are uh, kind of related to one another. So um, user Bibing asked, uh, is being able to customize the look of a property, a feature that we can expect someday? Um, and at the same time, Hodler asked, um, I would like to use my property as a billboard for others to advertise on. What is the likelihood that that will be uh, a feature in the future? Dirk, do you maybe want to take those? Yeah, so of course, both, both are going to happen. Um, um, so obviously, right now, we are selling just the land or the pure parcels. But eventually, and we're currently looking at different ways of doing this right now, of course, you will be able to build on top of the land to erect a building, uh, you know, to what, whatever you want to want to build. How close it is going to be connected to the real world is also conceptual we are currently thinking through. Um, there's a couple of ways go to going about it. So that's, that's uh, not all the way at this moment, it's not decided. However, and that goes back then to the question from Hodler, um, you know, using it as a billboard. Yes, of course, is that this piece of what you want to do? Uh, we will probably allow that. And what is, uh, what is, but very important for us is that we do not want at that moment collect the user data or something, right? That's just between, let's say, the decentralized stakeholder, the player, the uplander in the game who offers the billboard and his potential customers, right? So we don't want to sit in the middle there. You know, that's, that's again, the whole philosophy what we're calling the decentralized open economy, and then they can offer that. Uh, but I mean, the, we need to think about about cer some certain controls, of course, you know, we cannot completely allow everything because sometimes, you know, people misuse it and, and uh, we will always want to make sure, right, that the game is functioning in, in a proper way and uh, we have to uh, see how, how we carefully, you know, do, you know, some, some, some limitations versus, you know, giving completely freedom to, to, to the players. Mm -hmm. I can add to that maybe that, uh, uh, you know, you can expect to see some uh, uh, initial ideas of land development coming, you know, sooner than later. So I hope uh, players will be ple pleasantly surprised with uh, some future developments uh, going on. Um, so uh, some of the guys in the uh, chat here uh, said that uh, what they believe Holder meant was will the billboard be able to um, feature an advertisement, for example, from a sponsor? I assume that they mean that, that the owner will enjoy. Um, did I get that right, guys? Attendees, uplanders. Yes, I got it right. So did, should I repeat the question? Um, yeah, let's see if I understood the question correctly. Yeah, that's exactly the idea, right? When you are the owner of, of a property, you can erect a billboard, maybe decide not to build, put a building on it, maybe just the billboard, that's what you do, right? Maybe it's in a good location in quotation marks where you have a lot of eyeballs. And yeah, then you're free to fire it up there. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, and then you can sell that billboard maybe to, to a brand, maybe, you know, the, the, you want to do, you know, a car manufacturer being on your billboard, right? You, you can do that. Right. To what extent we will, um, you know, you know, develop some tools. You know, that's that's what we said also. We maybe we develop some tools, but maybe since we want to have this open development platform, maybe third-party developers develop some tools, which uh, which you can then use as a as a you know as a billboard owner to 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 add you know brand brand advertising in there. Right. There you have it, guys. Um, so even though you know the game is still technically in uh, open beta, we actually have had uh, quite a nice number of uh, non-crypto people uh, joining us, and um, uh, sometimes they tend to ask uh, you know initial questions that are kind of shared amongst themselves. So here's one for example, Idan, maybe you want to answer this. Um, we had a new user, uh, Lego U7 Neon, asked. Why do you need to buy OPEX before you can keep your visa? Yeah, and, and the answer to that is quite simple. First of all, 
I, I would rephrase that. You don't have to buy Apex to become, uh, to become an Applender. The definition is you have to accumulate a net worth of 10,000 Apex in order to be eligible to become an Applender. And you can do that by, you know, uh, just, um, you know, earning yield. You can do that by finding treasures. You can do that by having other Applenders visit your properties, et cetera, et cetera. So this can take time, but it is possible to get there without uh, buying Apex. The big reason why we did that is because, again, keep in mind uh, that we are running an open economy and we are running uh, a fun game. The problem with games is that uh, a large uh, you know, portion of players that install games, they install it, they try it out, but then they don't come back uh, uh, to play the game ever again. So you may lose most of your players by you know, a, couple of way, a couple of days after they've installed the game. Uh, and now at the same time, in order for us to kind of like captivate uh, the players, uh, you still ha we, we still have to offer them uh, a good value proposition. You still have to hit them with kind of like, why is it fun? You still need to give them the experience of owning a property, completing a collection, maybe finding a treasure, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is that when, if those, if after all these uh, uh, things, uh, the player still lapses and that doesn't come back, we need to be able to recover the assets because it's an open economy because every apex coin counts and every property counts we as game operators have to be able to recover uh, those assets back in favor of the economy if the players don't come back um, and, and and then that's why we kind of like uh, came up with a visitor metaphor so as long as you're a visitor in the game you can still come, come keep playing all you need to do is kind of like come back and renew your visa once every seven days and then, but at that phase, we, Appland still controls your private keys for your assets. So we still have the option to recover your assets in case you decide not to come back. And then at some point, when you become a, uh, an Applander, so we kind of like, uh, we as operator understands that you have value in the game. It doesn't matter if you monetize or not, but you have value because you're an active participant in the Appland economy, in the Appland world. At that point, you become an Applander and we as operators lose access to your digital assets. We, can't, we don't know your private keys. We can't take your assets away from you. So that, that is the, the primary reason why we came up with a visitor uplander metaphor in the game. Cool. Yeah, you know, people and, and the players in general, the community needs to take into consideration that it's all a matter of, you know, resources, in-game resources, outside of game resources. And it's a very uh, delicate balance that the uh, company is trying to manage. Um, here's a lighter question. Um, Ender's World asked, how did you decide to go with the 8-bit eight eight bit block yeah. style of uh, that's so, uh, you know, uh, kind of become our thing, you know, the uh, block explorers and uh, the whole design. What do you guys have to say? Yeah, about that? Uh, so um, I, I don't know if I want to say 8-bit necessarily. I, I would call it, uh, and uh, again, this is, uh, again, kudos to, to Jason for doing an amazing job with kind of like totally. setting the entire experience of Upland. So yeah, Upland itself, I think it feels ultra modern. You know, we have Miles that is in no way 8-bit. Miles B. Chain, our llama is no way 8-bit character. But we do have elements that are uh, voxel styled and voxel meaning like, you know, uh, so in, in, with two, the 2D world, you have pixel art in the 3D world, you have voxel art, right? So it becomes like a three dimensional pixel that with it you buy either with high resolution or low resolution, uh, you, you do art styles. The reason we went with that again, it, it's to tie back to the larger vision. Uh, in the future, when you zoom into the map, you're going to start seeing structures and trees and, you know, gardens and whatever and cars. And all of these things have to have a 3D aspect. So uh, envisioning that, we knew that also our block explorer, our game pieces in Upland, they also have to have uh, a 3D uh, kind of like a uh, feel to them. So they all tie back together into the larger picture. So th that is the primary reason why we went with the voxel art. What about uh, Miles, who thought of that idea? Well, that's, that's, a, that's yeah, the, an interesting story. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, I mean, the, I mean, we want to tell the true story is, um, you know, when we started out, we were actually uh, together, we were, uh, you know, in uh, subleasing in another, you know, friend's office. And um, that office is actually a company called Big Panda. And, you know, it's a B2B company. Um, but they had a panda as a, as a you know, as a, as a hero or in the game. And we said, oh, we should also have that. 
uh, you know, because you know, because we will strongly believe there has to be some recognition, brand recognition going forward. And then you know, we asked Jason, hey, you know, we we think you know we should have maybe an animal. Why, why don't you give us some some sketches? And then uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> Jason presented a couple of them. Of course, you know, the beaver is clear, right, and some others. And and there was the llama, and it was actually just a silhouette. But we immediately all all three of us said, yes, that's it. That's how we should do it. And um, but it looked completely different. Actually, we had different variations of the llama, and then actually we found a very good illustrator who created this this very very distinct, unique character, which you see there in the background of uh, right now in our Zoom background here. And um, yeah, and then we came also up with the name name Miles. And you see, we also have T-shirts and so on. It's also we plan on doing much more merchandise around it because what we've heard so far that people really like 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 the llama, right? So so when the it's, it's going to be fun to uh, have maybe a llama shop somewhere in, in Upland, you know, virtual, but maybe somehow real as well. <laughs> so that's the idea. So not everybody knows this, but I actually, I think Idan, you showed it to me once, right? Like the design of Miles, the mascot, the, went through the evolution, a long, yeah. <laughs> yeah, evolution, and it was a whole, uh, <laughs> whole thing. Oh, Dirk, we can't yeah. exactly see it, but uh, uh, yeah, so you're holding <laughs> the... Uh, we have a llama plush also. Right? <laughs> it's a prototype of our llama plush here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but nice. it's, it's funny. We, we do have a llama timeline. But maybe at some point we can uh, share with the community. It, it is pretty hilarious how, how the evolution of a llama from like a 2D origami style silhouette to a full blown Miles B chain. But yeah. Sweet. So, how about we go into some. Uh kind of stats and uh, numbers a little bit. Um, Thank Me Later asked, what is the average number of properties owned by a single Uplander? And maybe you guys want to go into some other numbers if you have them. Yeah, so, um, as you know, my, my hobby in quotation marks is, you know, I did a little research when I was at the university. Uh, you know, my PhD was about private and state controlled currency, the whole uh, you know, creating economies and so on. So what we're doing right now is actually, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a very interesting also research project because as you can imagine, right, when you see the Federal Reserve or the European Central Bank or whoever you right, it's they always you know have to, you know, see how much money they ingest. And especially you see these days, you know, it's going to be a very very interesting experiment with all those programs the the governments are you know you know throwing out there now to to trillion here in the U.S. and uh, you know, billions in, in everywhere else. So, so in the real world, it's going to be an interesting experiment, but the same thing is true also for, for us. So we're watching numbers very careful. And um, as you can see also in the white paper where we explain how our economy works, we have two different pools where, you know, we were serving, we injecting money very carefully. Uh, we have to inject money, you know, to, to, to keep the economy rolling. And, but the ultimate goal is that we also increase the velocity. That means that people really trade in between them. But I want to share some numbers, uh, you know, so you get an idea also what, what actually has currently has happened, you know, to, since we came out of open beta, as you know, we launched close beta with a very small group last June, but we came out of open beta just after Christmas and, you know, it's been really great so far. So, but to give you, you know, the, the framework here. So in San Francisco, we have 150,000 properties, um, you know, which can be potentially bought. What is not included in San Francisco, for instance, right now, the, the landmarks. So, so we, and that's that's coming. But um, Ida mentioned also in context of the squads, you know, you know, we're, you know, we're thinking about the Golden Gate Bridge. Everyone knows the Golden Gate Bridge, but there are a couple of other official landmarks in, in, in San Francisco. Um, right now, we have 4,000, a little bit more than 4,000 um, uh, players. These are visitors and uplanders. And um, so and we have currently, when you count them together also, probably, so the visitors, of course, they own right now, not really truly own it, but they own it because they can acquire them as long as they are, um, as they are a visitor. So we have roughly 19,000 um, uh, pro properties owned. Um, and um, so then it gives us a roughly a property you know, per player of 4.2, right? Um, so for sale are currently roughly 4,000 properties. Uh, we have a little bit less than, and I checked actually the database yesterday evening. So we have roughly less than, nine, than 900 um, uplanders. Um, um, the, and that's now a much larger number, number of properties owned by the uplanders are 16,000. 
Um, and so that gives us an average property per uplander of roughly 19.19. So that's, that's, I think, the questions which came from Thank Me Later. And thank me later. Uh, I just want to. I want to thank you, <laughs> actually, in your name. <laughs> so thank you later. But um, uh, feel free also to reach out, also to to us, also to me. You know, in terms of stats and math, because you're doing a great job there. You know, I'm happy to to discuss things also. Right, it's a really really good job. Um, also, what might be interesting, and in, you know, how many you know you know of the larger ones or larger players out there. So we currently have 50 uplanders who own more than one million apex. So that's actually, you can see that's uh, quite, quite a significant uh, number already. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's, I think the main, I mean, we have much more data, of course, we're watching, we're watching you know, how prices are developing across all properties. And, um, you know, over time uh, we are looking into, uh, you know, you know what, what's the average purchase prices and, and so on. Yeah. So we're watching that. And it's going to also be quite interesting, you know, how prices are developing, you know, when, when there are certain collections in area, because as you all know, the way we have defined the prices in the beginning, um, we explained it at other, another place also is, uh, we took um, actually an, 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 a publicly available database uh, from, from uh, Trulia, we took that and uh, said a base price, and then actually we had a mathematical model behind it, how we came up with all, all the other prices. Um, so that that is uh, how it came. However, this is the real world, but you know, as we have collections and you know other things happening in the game, we expect that you know that prices will actually also deviate from the real world. There will always be a connection to the real world, you know, like 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 properties close to the ocean, which people just want to have because they want to have a nice view of the ocean. One day, you know, that, that could have an impact, but also, you know, in-game events and in-game things will, which will change and, of course, the dynamic and the supply and demand at the end of the day will decide over, over, over the price. And by the way, maybe just to uh, tie that into the context of uh, what's coming uh, probably in 2020. So uh, everybody knows that in, in our roadmap, we have uh, dashboards and statistics coming up in, in 2020. And maybe just to elaborate a bit on that. So, uh, we're going to uh, divide it into, you know, a more uh, significant dashboard that you're going to see that shows you a lot more than just like what are your current properties and what is your net worth. But we're also going to add a section that's going to be called uh, something along the lines of pro tools. So uh, uplanders that have, uh, uh, we're going to announce a couple of new statuses, which is also in the roadmap. And uplanders of specific status will have access to pro tools, giving them, you know, very deep insights into market economy that then they can they can kind of like investigate on the uh, neighborhood level, on the city level, on the upland level, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of cool tools are coming also for the, for you pro uplanders. Um, okay. We have uh, money, uh, Honigstein, uh, just uh, saying hello to him uh, who's joining us now. He's there as uh, one of the attendees. Um, that's uh, Upland's third co-founder, guys. Um, we had a few questions, live questions coming in that maybe you guys just want to answer real quick. So uh, Dustin asks if, <laughs> if uh, players will ever be able to control the direction in which their explorer wanders. Great question. We, we've had it a lot. Um, and I, I can tell you the, 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 you know, the, the pros and cons. So, uh, Again, the, obviously the pro is that we know that it's, it can be very frustrating to get your explorer to go where you want it to go. We know that. Uh, and and we, we're going to address that issue. The con of letting you just decide exactly the direction is that we always uh, thought that it shouldn't be uh, too easy to, to get uh, to discover properties. There has to be some kind of an element of uh, kind of like of difficulty. And I know that frustration is not always like a good solution uh, to make things uh, not too easy. So we are going to work on a solution for that. So the, the answer is we don't know if we're going to allow you to specifically decide on the direction uh, because that may be too easy then to discover uh, new properties. Uh, but we're definitely going to solve the frustration in one way or another. Terrific. Um, what about the monthly yield of uh, UPEX, just kind of like a general number 
uh, you know, about that. What is the highest monthly UPEX yield that uh, a single Uplander is earning right now? Yeah, so, so I'm going to act as though as I'm surprised by the question, <laughs> but actually I'm not, so I've, I've looked into it. So the, the highest amount of Apex collected within a month uh, in practice, meaning that it was actually collected in a month, was uh, 112,000 Apex. Um, so that, that was the highest amount of monthly yield ever collected uh, in a month. Again, I have to say that it's not the potential, it's, the, it's Apex that was collected in practice uh, within a period of a month by a single player. Impressive for whoever that was. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's a person earning some serious uh, optics. Um, okay, here's um, another interesting one. Um, Holdler asks, will we be able to change our custom explorers if we want to? The custom explorers, I assume that means the, um, uh, uh, the custom block yeah. explorers for the 1 million plus players. Yeah, so for those who are not aware where the custom explorer is, so we have one feature, once you reach 1 million optics, you can actually, we have a website and um, Elad can probably post that link again, uh, where mm -hmm. you can upload your own, you know, your own image and then we create your custom explorer. So it can be, you know, it can be a photo of yourself or maybe some something else. And uh, we have our illustrator or designers to, to uh, create that. Will you be able to check? First of all, you then, you know, it will appear one day then once you have that. And we're currently actually creating the first custom explorer at the moment. Um, we um, will, you will be able to, to then, you know, we will be able to replace your current Explorer, your standard Explorer, let's say it like this, then with your custom Explorer, you will see that popping up in your menu. Uh, so that, that's, that's coming in the next days. Um, so what is also important, you can always change it back, of course, because that's the, the way it works. But how we see it also going forward, and that's what we mentioned also earlier, is that we maybe have also other artists creating explorers and they can maybe then sell their explorer also in, uh, you know, their, their art as explorers in, in the game. So that's, uh, I clearly see something, you know, that would, what, what, what we could do going forward. I mean, that's nothing short term, but that what could be allowed. Also that players might be able to sell the explorers to other players. So that's also because it's just another asset which we will, you know, which we want to, we want to allow to be put on the market. Yeah, eventually we, we see explorers becoming NFTs uh, and, and again, uh, people that design their own explorers or sell them or operate explorer stores, they're going to be able to uh, sell and resell them in the market. Idan, is there any specific uh, plan to make the whole NFT experience, you know, and um, the, the possibility of, you know, buying them, selling them, whatever, um, more accessible to people who don't necessarily come from blockchain and don't know what an NFT is? Absolutely. So, so again, uh, um, regardless of the term NFT, imagine a player uh, installing Upland, starting to play, and then he sees, you know, he walks into a gallery, which is basically an ex a block explorer gallery. He chooses his own, the one he wants to buy, you know, he buys an extra fancy one. Now he owns it and he has the option to put it back and sell it in the market, uh, whether to, to another store or he can set up his own store or, or what have you. So that person, again, he is now an owner of a true digital asset. He can trade it. Maybe uh, one day we have a sec like an, a market that's also outside of Upland for using these uh, for using these uh, um, uh, digital assets. But uh, he doesn't need to know anything about NFTs or blockchain. He just you know he has his uh, Upland EOS identity. That NFT is tied to that identity. He has true ownership over that asset. He doesn't need to know though anything about NFTs or or, or, or anything else to enjoy. Uh, the prospect of owning it, reselling it, collecting it, you know, whatever they want. Or just using it in Upland. That's also uh, a good option. Right. Um, I'm just looking at some uh, additional questions that are coming in here. Dirk, there's one from Thorsten. It's all in uh, German. I don't know how you want to tackle yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, wait, I don't know. I can uh, I can read it to you, but uh, I'm I'm a little shy in front of Thorsten to do it live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll send it to you real quick. It's uh, uh, just send me on Slack, and then I will I will maybe do the next question in the meantime. Well, it's uh, it's coming at you here uh, in a private message inside. Uh, oh. 
uh, and then uh, have a read of that. And in the meantime, uh, let's do another uh, okay. question. Oh, you want to take it? Yeah, he's asking whether we will add flags to, to the Explorer so we know where people are coming from. Actually, that's a good, interesting idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're happy to look into that. That's, that, that's a good one. So, by the <laughs> way, uh, just to speak to that, it, it was always uh, kind of like a, a vision of ours that, you know, each region will have its unique uh, custom explorer. So you'll know that if somebody installed the game in whatever, Hong Kong, and played it there, but then, you know, took, a, took an airplane to San Francisco, you would visually be able to identify that, hey, this guy is not from around you. This is, you know, maybe it's like a, uh, so we, we imagine that each region will have its kind of like unique, uh, kind of like, you know, style of explorers. So you can kind of like spot, uh, you know, outsiders from, from their original locale. But flags could yeah. also be a, a cool, a cool concept. Yeah. Interesting. Um, here's a question, uh, you know, bring us back to, uh, San Francisco. So China asks, uh, you know, with so many notable neighborhoods still available and a new city, you know, kind of still far away, kind of not, uh, depending on how you look at it, uh, will there still be additional collections released in San Francisco? So. Uh, maybe I take the first part of the question. What we, we so uh, right now uh, we're very careful uh, with uh, releasing new collections. Uh, to to be honest, because it has an impact on on the economy, right? Um, so um, and uh, so if we do that, then again, you know, very very carefully. However, that is you know, if you, as you can imagine, uh, you know, that as when we branch out to other cities, um, there will be also cross cities collections. And, um, and then of course, you know, somehow there will be also additional collections also in, in, in San Francisco. Um, then going forward, uh, we also plan on having a certain system where actually we predefine the kind of collections, the number of collections and so on. And we actually put those onto the blockchain, but they will not be available right away. There will be a certain mechanic when they will be released. However, because we're doing it like that, then actually uh, we actually have uh, predefined those rules and they cannot be tweaked afterwards. And we want actually to do that to be more neutral in the terms of what kind of collections are coming out. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we're trying to keep things, you know, balanced in the spirit of, you know, how we've done everything uh, to this point, right? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, one thing that's always very important, we always, always, always have the stability of the economy in mind. I mean, that's our most important goal, right? That's also why we have this fixed exchange rate, $1 um, to 1,000 APEX in there right now. So that that's must be very important because we have been asked many times, hey, why don't, I mean, besides, you know, the regulatory aspect, because just because we cannot do it at the moment, is, you know, putting APEX on an exchange. But just picture that if we would now, if APEX would be free floatable elsewhere, right? And then APEX would go up and down in prices. And then, you know, house prices would go up and down. It would be super complicated to understand is that now an effect of the currency or is that really supply and demand of the house you know of the parcels and of the of the properties right so that's the reason we want to have a, you know that this exchange rate is fixed and um you know so we really have a, you know that filtered out in, in that moment hmm. um all right Let's see what else we got here. So follow-up question to what we had before. Uh, can we expect more museums and iconics? Yeah, so the, um, so the, first of all, iconics was also a collection where we've learned. So iconics is somehow a little bit subjective. So first of all, to answer that clearly, we are not planning on additional iconic uh, collections here in San Francisco. So that's, we're, we're pretty much done with that. So if you think there's a building which might be iconic and they say, hey, why don't you, can, can't you add it? We are not adding them anymore, right? That's, that's done. Um, then in terms of museums, there are some museums out there who are not official museums. They somehow declare them as museums, right? So that's also what we are not going to add. However, we will be adding now 12 new museums in the next few days. And Elad is going to announce that when we are going to announce them. They haven't been yet on, on the map. The reason is 
because um, we had a technical thing which uh, we have resolved right now because they are quite large properties, but that is resolved. And now those 12 museums will be added into the game in the um, next days. <clears throat> yeah. So again, just to reiterate for whoever, uh, for whatever reason didn't hear, like Dirk said, uh, we will be releasing uh, new museums and we will announce ahead of time when and how that's gonna happen. Keep an eye on our social channels for that. Again, just to reiterate, these museums have always been a part of the collection. We just didn't have the option to put them in the market. So they are gonna be added there now. Um, on the topic of market stability that came up uh, before, so Sidod asks, what specific plans uh, do we have for ensuring market stability? We're using pretty much the tools what central banks are using also in a certain way. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, but the most important thing is, so I explained it earlier that we have those different pools. I did that. Uh, we want to uh, watch out, you know, that we want to increase the velocity. That means we want really that transactions are happening between stakeholders, that's the best reason. That also means, <clears throat> because um, it was out there, you know, the yield or the earnings you currently have, as you all know, it's roughly 17% a year on a, on a property. Is it going to be like that? Um, we see that right now it's quite, quite high that we, over time, we see that also to being reduced because we wanna make sure that there's not too much inflation in the system we really have to control, but that, that's something uh, <clears throat> when exactly this will be coming, we have to see how our uh, market, uh, our money supply and demand is uh, developing. So we're ingesting some more money with, through different marketing campaigns here and there, but if it's too much, then we also will have methods how we also going to take money out again. So, and uh, taking money out is of course, you know, through, you know, people have to buy properties, but we will add new features into the game <clears throat> that we uh, will allow actually to uh, to have what is called in a, in a terminology money sinks where people actually can put uh, their money in. And I, I can clearly see, let's say when, you know, just to give you one concrete example, let's say you want to maybe become a car dealer um, in, you know, in San Francisco, maybe you have to acquire a license for that in order to sell cars on your property. So that, that's one example how we actually can then also take money out of the system again. And, uh, but so don't, you don't have to worry, we're watching that very, very carefully every day. And, uh, and, um, and uh, even though I'm repeating myself, this is the most important thing, it has to be a stable economy, right? I mean, it will fluctuate, right? As, as in real life, uh, you know, currencies fluctuating. But, um, but uh, and overall, we want to really achieve that uh, stability. And, and it's important to understand that uh, whenever we, you know, when Dirk says take out Apex uh, from the economy, it, it means we as Upland, we never take Apex back, right? We only sell Apex to Uplanders. But when Uplanders pay Apex, it always goes to the community pool. And that is the pool that is responsible to pay out things like interest rates, in-game bonuses, et cetera, et cetera. So it's always kind of like, stays within within the economy to support it and i think like going forward we'll probably have uh, these kinds of like state of the union uh you know communications where once every in, in in a defined period of time we review the economy we call out you know the good the bad the ugly and then we we kind of like announce the adjustments that are made to these levers that we have in order to keep things uh, stable yeah so as you can see that, right? It's not us taking the money. When there's a transaction, a marketplace transaction, you know, you know, you have each seller and buyer both have to pay five percent. This money is going to the community pool, and the community pools then the yield. So you see, there's actually, a, you know, some kind of a you know circle function function in there which we have built in. But speaking of that, um, I also want to announce one more thing. Um, which has been uh, mentioned a couple of times, you know, of uh, multiple accounts and so on. So, you know, multiple accounts are not allowed in the game. Each player is only to have allowed one account. And, and uh, we were thinking about, you know, because we've seen some activity, which we believe is uh, where users have actually created multiple accounts. Um, the way we are going to go about it, as you might have known, um, there's a there's a uh, Alcatraz, which used to be um, a, a prison or jail, and as you know, Monopoly also has a jail, 
Um, we, going forward, and soon actually we will open up Alcatraz in quotation marks, and um, the way it's going to work is that we are going to um, analyze the data, and when we find out that people are not behaving correctly, i.e. they have multiple accounts, um, they will give us a couple of warnings. That means they will be sent to, to, to Alcatraz, and with the consequence, you know, that they will not be able to do, for instance, uh, you know, transactions during that time. We will have probably a system where there will be multiple uh, multiple instances, there will be warnings and, you know, there will be also a phase before we enter into, you know, where we, before we send the first people to jail or the first players to jail. But um, that's how we're going to go about it and to ensure that uh, people are not cheating. And, um, you know, that is also very important coming back now to, to the economy. You know, when we identify those cheaters, we have to take them out because, of course, we don't want to risk any, any uh, effects on, on the economy. Yeah, and, and just to add, this goes on top of uh, the recently added feature of two-factor authentication, which also will help us in uh, in limiting uh, the ability to take abuse of uh, multiple accounts. I think all of that ecosystem together, and, and again, we're not going to touch anybody's digital assets. And again, uh, so people in Alcatraz, they're just not going to be able to play the game while they are while they are there for the for a limited time. And we also make we're going to make it public, so anybody who has their properties up for sale. And they're currently in jail they'll have a small badge you know announcing to everybody who potentially wants to buy uh that these guys are currently in jail so a again it, it kind of like uh it gives the community power to identify abusers and you know and, and and gently you know treat the issue once we have this going we will be able to do so much more with visitor accounts to just uh, incentivize them to become uplanders and become a, a true part of the economy so that's going to be a great feature coming forward Nice. Do you guys have time for a few more questions that came in at the last second? Yeah, that's good. For sure. All right. So um, we had questions from several different people uh, that came in asking specifically about the treasure hunts. And within the treasure hunts, they're asking specifically about balance and fairness. Um, basically, players want to know, um, are we going to uh, try to balance the treasure hunts um, in an additional way. I know that we had right the limit on um, collecting SENS, which was introduced recently. Is there anything else uh, that we plan on doing in order to make it uh, more possible for people that don't have, you know, a yeah. hundred different properties uh, to, to have a better chance is what they're yeah, asking. Yes, so, so, so first of all, uh, there's a, there's a built-in, uh, uh, you know, a feature of treasure hunts, which means the more properties you have, uh, uh, it helps you with treasure hunts. It doesn't make it impossible for anybody else to find treasures, but but it definitely helps you. Uh, so so it, the more properties you have, the more chances you have of going after the you know the big treasures, and that's that's an, an inherent part of of the game. Uh, and we, by the way, by limiting the sands, uh, our hypothesis was that that this would focus the bigger players on the bigger treasures because it would be more cost effective for them. So I think that's going to create a natural spread of of players going off from off, uh, you know across different treasures. But there are a couple of things we're going to add on top of that that will make it easier. So the one thing is we're looking now into making kind of like these uh, non-competitive treasures. So these are treasures that are smaller in essence, but uh, you don't compete with other players in order to get them. You just play it uh, with yourselves, and it becomes a matter of can I can I get there in in uh, small enough sense that it will be worth my time to collect it. So it's going to be a fun and rewarding experience that doesn't necessarily create this uh, this kind of like frustration about having to compete with uh, a lot of fast players. So it will become kind of like another tier of treasures. And uh, another way of, of handling this is also segmenting segmenting the treasures that we offer. So we can, uh, for example, give extra high rewarding treasures, but then only make them available for those top tier players. Whereas the other types of treasures could be only available for other types of players. So, so we are looking into uh, ways to improve that. I think, again, uh, Treasure Hunts was rolled out. We are studying, you know, how it's being played. I, I think it's a great feature. I think we can do a lot to improve it. Uh, so, yeah, we can expect a lot of improvements coming later on. Good stuff. Uh, let's see what else we've got here real quick. Mm. Dustin asks, is there a way to pass out funds for player run events, uh, like events that Thank Me Later does, instead of having to purchase a property in order to do so? 
Yeah, we're, we're definitely looking into it again. We have to keep in mind that uh, everything we do in that way uh, has to uh, to be uh, compliant. Uh, so a, a, again, uh, it's a bit of a, a regulatory challenge, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll figure out how to do it in a good way. What about um, P2P communication? Choyna asks, will there be in-game communication between players? Yeah, so that's actually on um, also on the roadmap. So we will have that. We we're currently, you know, also working on the concept here. You know, that two things. So peer-to-peer -peer communication, maybe communication within the squads, communication maybe when you know buying and trading around buying and selling trading uh, properties. So these these are things are there. Also, some kind of a maybe news feed, you know, where you can follow certain players, um, so or or certain properties and events. So that's that's definitely, and that's also what we've mentioned, the roadmap that's also coming later this year. What about uh, theme music in game? Is that gonna be coming? Well, I'm not sure about theme music, but sound effects are definitely coming. Uh, so we are actively working on it and it will debut hopefully, hopefully in 2020, uh, but we're definitely working on it. Theme music is, is a bit of a controversial issue. So uh, again, uh, you know, I, I've, I've, I, I'm a long time player of games and maker of games and uh, theme music can be annoying at points. So if it is coming, it's gonna be very subtle and kind of like not in your face. Great. And uh, here's a really interesting one. What about, um, will we be able to auction our properties at some point, someone asked? Yeah, so it's definitely, uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Dick. sure. No, no, I mean, yeah, that's, that's something we want to look into, right? We were thinking about in the context, of course, first about, you know, the, on the landmarks, but also uh, then uh, for, for the, you know, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I mean, that's, of course, you know, we all know eBay and so on. So we, but we have to think about the mechanics a little bit further, but that's also in the, in, in the concept phase. Mm -hmm. We had, um, a couple of last questions here. One of them is just, are there any plans to use other digital currency to buy OPEX? Already well, happening, right? Yeah, well, that's we already, have, yeah. We have, yeah. Yeah, so for, for every one of you listening, yeah, as you know, we, we do in-app purchases in, in uh, you know, iOS and Android, but then when you go to the web, you have way more uh, opportunities. You can use PayPal, you can use credit cards. We now have also added crypto in. Hopefully I get them right. It was uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, Dash. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. Right now. Yeah, Bitcoin Cash. So, so that we're doing also that with a, a third, uh, third party um, provider. Yeah, so that's definitely there. And it's always good to buy through the web, let's say, like this. Yeah? And also because you can also, you know, we have some restrictions on the on the app stores. So, you know, it's, for a player, it's probably better to go through that. Yeah, the experience for the uh, purchasing through the web app has been much better, I think, for uh, as a consensus from the community. Okay. Ethan, are we going to add something there? No, no. All right. Uh, we just have uh, two final questions. Um, one of them is, is there a way without buying OPEX uh, and waiting years to generate enough with returns and visits by other players to upgrade from visitor to Uplander? And after achieving Uplander status, how do you go about, you know, increasing your OPEX or your money, I guess, when we have uh, Fiat out? Uh, without investing further real money. I'll let you guys answer in just one second. I just want to say, you know, off the top of my head that these are questions for whoever asked it, uh, that the community is very happy to, uh, to answer themselves. We have lots of very experienced veteran players who are very welcoming, and uh, you can find them in our Telegram channel, Upland Community. So, you know, don't, uh, don't fear to just uh, join us there and uh, ask whatever questions you have. They're happy to share their skills and their strategy with you. With you. But uh, how about you guys? Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, so I think we've mentioned everything in the past uh, and even here in this discussion. Uh, again, you can, uh, you can earn in Upland, you can find treasures, you can play, you can complete collections and get one-time rewards. You can get uh, boosts on your yield. 
Uh, you can uh, get Apex incomes by visitor fees. So if you buy properties in the right places, you can get also uh, that form of income. In the future, we're gonna have much more features where you have more opportunities to, to find, to win, to earn, uh, and, and to kind of like uh, make it more efficient in terms of what you can make out of Upland. Again, like any other game, like any other economy, right? The more you make an effort to it, the more you study it, the more you spend time in it, the more you'll earn. If you're expecting to buy a property and just wait for it to, uh, triple, in, to triple in Apex in net worth without doing anything, that is not gonna happen. So uh, again, this is like the real world, it's real life, right? You make an effort, uh, you know, you, you get the gains. If you want to take shortcuts and you want to uh, also put a stake to it, you can do that. That's perfectly fine. You can grow your net worth that way as well. Uh, so, yeah. And just to add that, we have a couple of campaigns running across the web, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes we have partnerships where, you know, instead of getting the 3,000 Apex sign up bonus, you get 6,000. So that's here and there happening. Uh, we know with crypto and gamers, I think Elad posted a couple of times in the, in the channel also, uh, we're doing partnership where you can win up to 1 million Apex. So we're constantly doing that. Of course, you have to be active. Uh, but again, also, uh, if we would now make it too easy to earn lots of Apex, literally, you know, this would have an impact on the economy. And we want to build a real economy which works, which is stable. And that's, again, the reason why we will not distribute too much Apex to, to free players. 100%. Last question of the day comes from Choina. And very simply, will there be an option to either hide block explorers at will? Or I think um, Capitalist asked a different variation of this question is, will there be an option to show all of the explorers at the same time so that it's more thrilling when you're doing the treasure hunts? Nice. So, so two opposite uh, ends of the same Indeed. question. Indeed. Uh, well, yeah, it sh I mean, we, we can definitely look into it. Uh, um, hiding explorers obviously is going to be easy. Uh, making them all visible, sure, it's, uh, it, it would never be a default state because that would just make everything too messy. Uh, and then also there is a, a slight performance issue. So if you have uh, whatever, you know, 5,000 explorers running around your, uh, <laughs> your map, it's not only a visual mess, but it, it's also, uh, you know, a strain on, on, on your device. Uh, to, uh, and you're gonna, the result is going to be degraded performance. So we, we will definitely look into it uh, and, and, and see how we can, like, uh, find the right balance between, uh, between those two things. Things are a little bit easier. Since we have the desktop version now, you can view things on the larger screen. But <laughs> maybe we can <laughs> run a supercomputer to run Upland with all explorers. <laughs> <laughs> So we do have the desktop version now. Are we announcing that officially here? Yeah, why not? Sure, it's open. Uh, <laughs> I said it already. <laughs> oh, it's there. Yeah. yeah scratch, so scratch another one, another item off the 2020 roadmap. Yeah. Uh, so for whoever is uh, tuning in and uh, doesn't know yet, we do have the desktop version of the web app now. You can just access. Uh, the Upland game through play upland.me and just uh, play it through there. It's very convenient. And, and again, the, our experience with Upland was desi always designed to be a mobile first experience. So again, you are going to see a lot of elements from the mobile uh, version in the desktop. What we, our main goal was to, to have desktop playable. So if somebody chooses to, to use desktop, it's perfectly fine. You can do so. Uh, you would still find the experience is optimized for mobile devices. Great. That's all the questions that we have. Uh, do you guys want to wrap up by just saying a few words about the immediate future, you know, releases and uh, updates and things like that? Yeah, so first of all, uh, st Go stay ahead. tuned to the official announcement of Martini. Uh, we're going to have a release uh, covering uh, what, what that will include uh, um, uh, entirely. One thing I want to say is that we want to go uh, to the habit of doing shorter releases. So uh, if uh, up until now we've had usually like three months between each release, we're going to take releases now and kind of like uh, divide them up into shorter uh, sprints and releases. Uh, so you may see, so if we have Martini coming up, you may see a Martini 1 and Martini 2, uh, just so we are able to bring more features quicker to, to the market. Uh, and then Dirk, you wanted to say something? 
Yeah, no, I just, uh, no, I want just to say basically thank you, right, for, for you guys, you know, being patient with us. Of course, you know, we are in the software development business. Things take some time, some time. So, uh, so bear with us. So we're working hard. Uh, we have, you know, the team is growing. We have more people coming on board. Uh, but, you know, uh, of course, some people expect everything to be there tomorrow. But, you know, that's what we really appreciate. And we also want to thank you to, to, to the community here because I think you're very positive really great community and we love you know we're chatting you know with you know some of you one-on-one -on -one also we're getting good good impact good 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 feedback um so so really continue doing this this really really helps us a lot to develop the product also much much further going forward further down the road yeah so i think maybe that was the final word somehow <laughs> uh yeah could be uh Yvonne, is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap up I think we're all good. We we said a lot. Let let all the uploaders compile everything and kind of like uh, digest what we said. And and again, we we love this community. We love uplanders, and uh, I don't know everything's everything's awesome. And a big great. thank you also to Elad who does a great job oh, yeah. uh, managing our thank community you, thank here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great. So uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thanks also to everyone that joined us a little later after we started. Uh, we hope we managed to answer all of your questions. Just as usual, you know, if you want to join us on Telegram, we're always uh, available to answer your questions there. And of course, you'll find many of your fellow players um, as well. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. And we will see you in Upland. And stay healthy, guys. Stay healthy. All right. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Cheers. Bye.